Hello, and thank you for the opportunity to say a few words as Careers Yorkshire and Humber celebrate its first 18 months of inspiration activity with young people in the region. I'm very sorry not to be able to join you in person today. As you know, it's budget day and I've got to be in Westminster. But what I did want to do was send my congratulations for the good work that's been going on and encourage you all to keep on raising standards in the careers education available to pupils. Since I spoke at your launch event in 2014, you've worked with 342 schools and 327 employers. That's a fantastic total and means you've reached many thousands of children. You've co-sponsored skills fairs, attended business networking events, engaged thousands on Twitter, supported training for the new careers and enterprise company, and developed, I know, a new inspiration portal, praised by the excellent Wilberforce College in my part of East Yorkshire. Now, all of this is essential. None of it can be taken for granted. We all know that raising the profile of careers advice from being a marginal activity in schools to a core function of their role requires both time and lots of hard work. That's why since stepping down as chairman of the Education Select Committee in May last year, I've continued to focus on this policy area. Last autumn, I established a new all-party parliamentary group on careers, information, advice and guidance, together with fellow MPs. I'm determined that ministers should stay focused on this issue, because we need to be clear. There's been a slight change of emphasis from the Department for Education, and there's now more interest in delivering high-quality careers advice. But the situation on the ground remains extremely patchy. In a recent report, the new careers and enterprise company identified some really bad not spots of careers provision, such as Cornwall and the Black Country. But right across England, lots of schools are still not doing enough to ensure proper provision for their pupils. In 2013, Ofsted found that only one in five schools were effective in ensuring that all their students in years 9, 10 and 11 were receiving the level of information, advice and guidance they needed to support decision making. And it's a problem confirmed by subsequent studies as well. So why is this? After all, there are several excellent organisations, like your own, working hard to deliver a variety of different careers projects for young people. And most employers are keen to help, if they're only asked. As things stand, however, we keep trying to develop provision for a market which I think doesn't really exist, because so many schools still do not engage with the issue properly. That's because schools are not incentivised to take careers advice seriously. In our high-stakes education system, school leaders will understandably prioritise those issues that lead to serious consequences for them if they fail, notably exam results. And at the moment, careers advice doesn't fall into this category. Put bluntly, head teachers with a million other things to think about will not, you know, feel the pressure if their careers education is uh, delegated to uh, a particularly uninspiring teacher who last applied for a job 20 years ago and has been given responsibility for this because perhaps he's not very good at teaching. Um, that teacher will continue to be put in charge of careers teaching in too many schools for as long as heads feel they can park it with him safely. That's why I'm calling for the government's statutory guidance on careers advice to be amended so that all schools must work towards a quality award for careers education, information, advice and guidance that meets an approved standard determined by the Department for Education. At the moment, this is only a recommendation within the guidance and is duly being ignored by too many schools. If we made it compulsory for schools to meet the agreed standard, the appetite for high quality careers provision would leap among school leaders. You guys wouldn't be able to move for the clamour of heads asking for you to come and work with their pupils, I think the system would be unblocked. Of course, some significant ongoing challenges would still need to be addressed, notably the need to deliver effective mediation, if you like, between schools and employers who want to help, and to ensure strategic management of the system to address cold spots in delivery. But new urgency would have been achieved. So this is what... I'm now campaigning for cross-party with my colleagues 
Um, I'll be writing to the Education Secretary shortly, together with a number of leading careers experts and employer organisations nationally, to call for this change. I hope it'll lead to the statutory guidance being amended. For now, it's crucial that you continue to play your vital role in delivering high-quality careers provision. I'm, in, I'm delighted that your new inspiration plan for April 2016 to March 2017 would include your working to help schools make sense of the inspirational landscape and all the different initiatives that are out there. I've always been convinced that the National Career Service has enormous potential as an enabler to help schools develop their plans, to connect them with employers and to inspire young people. I wish you the very best of luck in the year ahead and hope you enjoy a successful conference today. I'm only sorry I can't be there. Thank you.